most of us sort of take for granted, you know, that we understand how the universe began with the Big Bang or so. But as I understand it, constructive theory is now offering a new way of thinking about that. And that's in many ways much more, very exciting and offering new possibilities in terms of thinking about how the universe began. I was wondering if you might be able to explain a bit more about that and how constructive theory offers an alternative to the existing models. Well, yes, I mean, this is, of course, um, uh, a program we have. Um, so I'll, I'll explain the gist of it with the idea that this is something we would like to do. Um, so the, the standard way of describing the universe uh, that we've had so far is to try to guess a, a law that, that explains what trajectory the universe is on. And that means just like you would do with a, with a ball and uh, you know when you kick it and you would like to know where it goes, um, all the points in space-time that it goes through uh, from the start to the end, you'd like to do the same with the universe. And, and we have some candidates for that, but um, there is of course a problem in setting the initial conditions and also in explaining why some initial conditions as opposed to others. Uh, constructive theory has a completely different approach to explaining physics. So instead of talking about laws of motion, trajectories and things like that, uh, the main statements of the theory are about what transformations are possible or impossible on a particular subset of systems of the universe. And then from those constraints, for example, an example of those constraints could be the conservation of energy, which we already know about, but constructive theory adds additional constraints. From those constraints, you construct the dynamical laws that are compatible with that and the initial conditions, and therefore those constraints become the explanations for those dynamical laws and initial conditions. So the logic is somehow inverted. And there is an idea that this uh, could be more fruitful in solving some of these problems that currently we have with the initial conditions of the universe. But of course, as I said, this is a problem, so it's something we are trying to work out. And first we are applying to construct a theory to a subsystem of the universe to find predictions about certain other problems. The cosmological problem is, is a very interesting one, but it's something that is going to be worked out in the future. So one of the debates that we're having at the festival obviously is about um, natural laws and whether lo the laws that we import or import upon nature exist out there in the world or whether they're a human construction. I wonder whether you might be able to have uh, offer an opinion on that in terms of like uh, these things that obviously we take, you know, gravity exists even though we maybe perhaps don't have a really good grounding in explaining it, uh, to just offer some sort of um, your thoughts on the idea of sort of natural laws existing out there in the universe and the universe being governed by these quite, you know, identical things. Yes, I, so, um, I don't think that's a necessary hypothesis that, that you uh, need to have as a physicist. As I was trying to explain earlier, um, for doing the physics job, you have to um, solve problems that come up in your understanding of physical reality the way you uh, see it around you. And in a way, it's, it's very uh, simple, the, the way you do that. It's just you come up with explanations that seem to make sense of those problems and solve them. So for example, when you, know, you, you, you saw the, the sky being uh, full of stars and planets and things like that, and at some point we were wondering why is it that they seem to move? And why is it that the sun seems to move? And why is it that this doesn't fit with the idea that the Earth is at the center of the universe, which was what we thought initially. And that was a problem, and, and we found a way of explaining the reality better in the way that the, the problem is, is solved with, with Newton's laws and gravitation, etc., etc. So for that type of activity, you don't really need to think that out there there is, or there isn't a particular law. You're just trying to address a problem in your understanding. Um, of course, it might be more um, beautiful in a way to think that there is reality out there, and that's actually my view. Uh, but it's a way, in a way, it's an assumption that I, I'm making um, to make my worldview more consistent. The idea that actually there are laws out there, and I'm trying to discover them, and this is all tentative. We can never know that the law that we have is the right one. But what we can say is whether it is or is not problematic, and if it is, then we can try to find one that isn't um, by solving problems. So I'm thinking the fundamental thing that you have to 
uh, assume is way in a way is the idea that you want to solve problems and then you have a way of solving them by coming up with new explanations and then if you like you can say oh well actually these explanations are trying to reach for these actual laws that are out there I like to think it like that but I don't think it's necessary for more debates talks and interviews subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.